I went to my first VGC tournament ever, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you how it all went. What is up, Crocs and Clown members, Poker fans? This is a, a very strange video that I'm doing for you guys. Okay, I was never expecting to ever just say something like this or do something like this in my life. Okay, I have stated in the past about how I've never been a BGC type of person. You know, anytime I've ever played competitive, it's singles, competitive smoke on, um, you know, smoke on tournaments or draft. You know, so it's all been singles related. Okay, and every time we get those fancy like trailers and and announcements from the Pokemon community with Pokemon Directs and all that stuff. I'll always just like BGC, TCG, World, all that stuff. Just good congratulations to those people. Let's move on. Okay, we got more important stuff to talk about. Okay, I've always been that guy. But in this video, I want to give you guys a rundown of what happened, how I came to this. Okay, how did how did I ever get involved with this stuff? Where did I go? What's going on? And stuff like that. And I hope that you enjoy this journey with me. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a little bit different type of video for you all today. Okay, it's gonna be a little bit different than normal I hope you guys enjoy it and you know leave thoughts comments uh, down below if you have your own experiences and all that stuff I really want to get this conversation going because this is a brand new journey that I have started and I want to be able to share it all with you So to start off for you all okay The reason why all this happened is I was just grinding my own business on YouTube just watching you know random content like I, I tend to do and everybody fucking does this shit You know, they're all on YouTube. They watch stuff enjoy stuff everything looks cool nice and dandy right and i was recommended a video from wolf Blink, okay the famous vgc player who won uh worlds 2016 um he's also like i don't know how many championships he's had he's won he's a very very prominent person in the vgc community from what i've heard he's won plenty of nationals regionals a bunch of stuff like he he's been playing for a really long time okay i just said fuck it i'll watch it so i watched a couple of his videos okay i was very intrigued um, by his play. I've mentioned before that I'm a very analytical person when it comes to anything I do, okay, which is why when I review the Pokemon Horizon series uh, or when I used to review the uh, old Pokemon series and anything else I do, I tend to have a very analytical viewpoint for certain things and that's why you see me nitpick a lot of times when I when I see things um, because they always bother me or I learn a lot more when I see things from that perspective. So when I saw Wolf explaining his plays and his mindset with certain things or his team building and all that stuff um, i was able to like visualize what his thought process was going in and i gotta admit I, it kind of clicked with me okay i i was able to see his point of view and and while i'm still not fully versed in the vgc you know ethos and i still don't know fully everything there is to know about vgc i was able to kind of put myself in the shoes of somebody who apparently has been doing this for a long time but from this perspective of somebody who's been playing singles for a majority of his life, right? So for those of you who are new or coming in, maybe if you, for some reason, this video actually goes out to like VGC players and stuff like that, or people that know this, my background is in singles, right? I've been playing competitive Pokemon since Gen 5, but I, I've only ever really like truly delved into it during the Gen 6 era. Um, Gen 7, I was a little iffy with, but I was really uh, into it in Gen 8. And obviously now with Gen 9, um, I did a lot in the beginning and now I'm delving into you know VGC. So that's my like a brief history I, I've, I've never been like super out there because it's never been something that I've ever like pursued as a career Right, and I've never been truly out there just to be like a smoke on tournament person, right? I, I played in, like a couple but I've never really dedicated a lot of my time because I've always seen Pokemon as a side hobby You know something I just tend to do and when it comes to competitive um, I just do it whenever I can or when I see something. So it's not like I'm literally out there hours upon hours practicing training and stuff like that. But I do have a very interesting grasp in how I team build and the types of teams that I tend to use are more on the, like the bulky uh, defensive side of things. So yes, you can call me a soft player if you want to. I don't fucking care. Okay, that's just the way I've always been. I've always liked defensive play. And that's probably another reason why I was able to click a lot with Wolf because of the way he positions himself and the way he's... Um, while he does have some like offensive momentum in a lot of the battles that I saw from him He tends to be portrayed more as a defensive player. So I was able to click a little more with that. So that's my background. Okay um, I, I do admit 
uh, and I will state this right now. I feel like if I truly dedicated my time for the for any of this for uh, an extended amount of time, I probably could do relatively good. Okay, I right now run like a draft league, so I can kind of do certain things. Um, I do admit that when it comes to a lot of like over the top wild stuff, I can get a little flustered per se. But that's because I don't like I said I don't dedicate a lot of time into it. But if I put my mind to something, I can do a lot of great things and. I feel confident in a lot of things I do and a lot of plays I have, right? So, what is this? What is this video about? Okay, Sorasan, you know, I, now, now that I'm hearing your story and all that stuff, what's going on? Okay, what, talk to me. Talk to me about what's going on. So, after, you know, delving into this world and seeing a lot of content from Wolf and, and all that stuff, um, I got interested, okay? I, I'll say it like that. I got interested in the world of VGC. So, I went out of my way to do a little research on the meta. Now, this was still during regulation F, okay? So, this was literally recently. Um, I technically participated in this tournament, and this was a local, okay? This is a local here in Puerto Rico where I live that I, I found that was, you know, hosting a, a VGC tournament. Well, there was a lot of other, like, it was like a convention, okay? And then they were going to have, like, various different games. Like, I know Smash was there, Tekken was there, um, you know, obviously VGC, TCG. Um, there was also... Um, what the fuck is it called? There's another fucking game. Street Fighter. There was Street Fighter in there. There was a couple, like, there was a couple tournaments that were being held at this event. And obviously just, like, you know, artist galleries and, like, people selling stuff. And so it's literally, it was a small convention near where I live, right? So I just said, you know what? Let's try it. Okay, I decided to try it. But I will say, blame Wolfie. Because it's because of his intellectual ingenuity that I went with what I did. So... What I ended up doing is I created a team. Okay, I'm gonna show it on screen right now. This was my team for this, my first VGC experience. Now, as you can tell, you're like, Sora son, what the fuck is this? Okay, what are these mons? And, and are you doing the strategy I think you're doing? Yes, my good friends, I was a Paris Trap user in this tournament. I had a team centered around the concept of Paris Trap. Okay, this is not the most well-liked strategy. I understand that. I know a lot of people in VGC don't technically favor this type of play style. They think it's very toxic or not as good or viable and a bunch of other stuff. Okay, and this isn't even the final form. I, I did do a little bit of like play testing on Showdown for, for a little bit. And the final team, the EVs, the, the stats attributions, the natures, the terra types, all that stuff was basically changed prior to the actual tournament. I do want to thank some of the people that helped me out. Um, obviously my wife, which supported me through all this, saying that she, this is something that if I feel the motivation to and, and if I do have this passion for it, she's gonna support me 100% of the way. Um, my boy Zen for helping me, you know, you know, make sure I get these mods. He helped me a lot with gathering, because I have Pokemon Violet, so he helped me get like the Fluttermane and the Screamtail and also help him with the breeding um, for the Gothitelle and a bunch of other stuff. And then also, I want to thank uh, my friend Choir Boy, who is a VGC um, expert. He plays in a lot of regionals and stuff like that. And he's like the only person I know personally who has experience in the VGC world. And he helped me a lot with my team building. He helped me a lot with my sets and stuff like that. So I, I he's also the one that really like showed me what it means to be a VGC player. Because obviously... As good as I can be in team building, which I, I am feel confident in what I can do as a team builder, um, in terms of VGC, because it's all new to me, um, and from what he's told me, this is more like a community thing, it's always good to have friends to help you when it comes to making teams. So I'm really appreciative to all of you for all that you did for me. Like I said, my wife, my boy Zen, my boy Choir Boy. Now, without further ado, I will talk to you guys about how I'm going to talk to you guys about the matches. Uh, to give you guys a brief rundown, this tournament wasn't relatively large, right? There was only seven people, and one of them dropped out after round one because I think that they, they, they lost, and I think they were salty or upset or something like that, and they left. So while it wasn't that big, it was a huge step forward for me to participate in something. And while I don't have like all the experience, it does help to be involved in this type of environment, which will help me if I do pursue this forward. So I did take notes of my opponent's teams. I'm gonna be showing them to you on screen. Um, I don't have replays, obviously, because none of this was streamed, okay? The, this local was really small uh, at this convention. So everybody just played on their, their handhelds. There, there's no, I don't think there's a replay function in, in Scarlet and Violet, so I wasn't able to save anything. So I'll give you guys their teams from you know the notes I have, and then I'll talk to you guys about the battle 
and go from there. My first opponent of this tournament had a quite interesting team. They had Rillaboom with Miracle Seed, Terra Grass, Knock Off, Grassy Glide, Fake Out, and Woodhammer. Tornadus with Covert Cloak that had a Terra Dark, which I'm assuming helps against Pranksters, uh, with Bleak Wind Storm, Tailwind, Taunt, and Sunny Day. Now this is the first Sunny Day team I've ever seen. Iron Hands with Terra Fire, AV, using Wild Charge, Drain Punch, Heavy Slime, and Fake Out. Then you had Walking Wake with a Life Orb, Terra Water, Hydro Steam, Draco, Flamethrower, and Protect. And then the last two that also take advantage of the Sun, you had Choice Bex, Terra Fairy, Flutter Mane, with Dazzling Gleam, Moonblast, Shadow Ball, Icy Wind. And lastly, Gouging Fire with Terra Grass, Killer Amulet, using Flare Blitz, Stomping Tantrum. I believe it was Dre uh, the Burnt, the, what the fuck is the Dragon Move, Breaking Swipes, or whatever the hell, and then Burn and Bulwark. I, I totally missed on the last move that it had. I do want to apologize for these sections because I kind of had to like look at my notebooks to give you guys a brief idea of what the hell was going on during these matches. And on top of that, um, I wasn't able to write play-by-plays here, okay? There, there was just no time in between any of this stuff. So I'm going to give you guys a brief rundown of the mods they chose. And I, did, I not, did I not fucking write the ones I fucking used? Oh my god, I'm going to be so upset. I didn't. Did I not? I didn't write the ones I <laughs> I feel so bad now. I'm, but I'm going to give you guys an idea of what happened. Okay, And I do have uh, like a recording that I did after the first and second matches. Because after that, the, the matches were like like that. So, um, so I'll have that video clip right after this portion. And then we'll go from there. So at least for this first set, right? My, my game plan, seeing all this stuff, is that I need to deal with this Flutter main, right? This is going to be a nuisance. Walking Wake is going to be a pain in the ass. And then also the gauging, the gouging fire is gonna probably be problematic. So at least in the first game, this is the mods they brought. They brought uh, Iron Hands, Flutter Mane, Walking Wake, and Gouging Fire. Now, they did lead with the Iron Hands and the Flutter Mane, and this was kind of like a problem because I believe, if I remember correctly, that my leads were Landorus and Gothitelle. If I if I remember correctly, I knew this was gonna be rough because of the whole Terra stuff and stuff like that. I can't parish shop against the Flutter Mane. Okay, that's not happening. And my only answer to, to, to Fluttermane is technically speaking my Registeel. Out of all my mons, it's supposed to be the one that answers for it. But with Iron Hands in the picture, it gets a little dicey. So I do know that it did take, like, Fluttermane really just, just just did a number on me in the first match. Um, but I was able to claw back just a little bit, and then Registeel is actually the one that won me the game. Okay, Literally, I'm pretty sure that Registeel defeated every mon, right? Because I was able to iron defense up enough to where I wasn't scared of the walking wake anymore, and I also wasn't afraid of the gouging fire at the end of the battle. And I believe, I, th I do believe that my last two mons were Registeel and Screamtail, if I remember correctly, I'm trying to recall, but I think those were my last two mons. Um, but they were able to clutch it out for me in game one. And then game two, they led with Rillaboom, Tornadus, and then they had gouging fire and walking wake in the back. Now, this one was, I do, I do recall one thing and I did write in here, I led Fluttermane in this battle because I was expecting, okay, so I can do something here with my Fluttermane to deal some damage and stuff like that. And I ended up getting crit in the battle, okay? My Fluttermane was, was, was poised to, to, to do some fucking work and it got crit. But at the end of the day, um, my, my Terra Fairy uh, Registeel was able to clutch it out and literally is the reason why I won again. Um, but this time, um, I don't remember if I won 2-0 the, the battle. Um, but I do know that Registeel is the reason why I won, again, because Registeel is too tanky, and she, she, the, my opponent, she didn't really have too many answers for Registeel, um, aside from the Gouging Fire, but because I terrored, and I also was able to stop it from doing its shenanigans, then it made it a lot better for me, so, gotta love my Registeel. Well, I just finished my first round. Uh, this was stressful, to say the least. Like, I... I was, I did not think I was gonna win game one um, because the flutter mate was just, it was doing too much. Um, so I was a little worried about that. But uh, Registeel, the tank, like always, um, is basically the reason why I won. And Scream too. I'm so glad I switched to like Encore Disable before this tournament because, bruh, like it helped me out. Like I, I was able to beat the Gabby Fire. I was able to beat um, so many things and it's, it helped me a lot, so it, it was. My hands are still shaking. My wife like had to hold me when I when I finished the first round, but I'm looking forward to, uh, to the next one. There's only like six players, so I mean, not, I mean, yeah, I'll, obviously I'll say that in the beginning of the video when I tell you guys now. But even so, like every battle, yes, 
It's gonna be intense, okay? Because this is the first time, so I'm a little nervous, but <laughs> getting ready for round two. Let's go. All right, now my round two opponent is definitely the closest match I had, or the closest set I had, I should say. Um, they had a really good trick room team, okay? They had Ursa Luna, this is the regular Ursa Luna, with Terra Fairy, Flame Orb, Facade, Headlong Rush, Swords Dance, Protect, Hattering, which had Life Orb, Magic Bounce, um, Terra Psychic, with Expanding Force, Dazzling Gleam, Trick Room, Protect. And then you had Focus Sash, Flutter Main, right? Which had Dazzling Gleam, Moon Blast, Shadow Ball, Protect, Standard. Uh, then you had Torkoal, which is Choice Specs with Eruption, Weather Ball, Solar Beam, Earth Power. Indeedee with Rocky Helmet, Follow Me, Dazzling Gleam, Helping Hat, Trick Room, and then Gallade, which also had a Clear Amulet, Psycho Cut, Sacred Sword, Wide Guard, and Trick Room. So two good Trick Room mods. Well, actually three good Trick Room mods that there were there. It's a little all about Trick Room, and I gotta admit, it was it was a hassle and a pain and a half to do. And because of the the Rocky Helmet, I do admit I didn't do a lot of what I should have done or could potentially done a little better. But I will talk to you guys about how the matchup went and all that stuff. Okay, so hard trick room is, is never easy, okay? Never in this type of matchup is ever going to be an easy thing. Um, I do admit that I did make some misplays in the first game. Now, this this is, I will admit right now. I'll say this right now. This is my only loss in the tournament, okay? Not in the end. <laughs> so, spoilers for the rest of the sets, okay? But this is the only set I lost all tournament long. And honestly, I should have gone for the Parish Trap at some point. You know, I could have done really good. So, so here's here's how the matchup went. Okay, I, you had Fluttermane and Indeedee in the in the lead with Ursaluna in the back. Now, I didn't see their last Mon in the first game because I got fucking bodied. Okay, but I did waste my Terra. That's the, that's one of the notes I did point out is that I did waste my Terra, and um, I wasn't able to handle the Fluttermane in the back. And not only that, but like the Ursaluna just came in clutch and like. I don't think I brought Registeel into the battle because of the fact that I had to deal with Torkoal and Ursaluna, which are never easy. And then also, like, Galate I can handle, no problems. But um, I did watch the Terra on my Landris, um, trying to do some damage. And just, overall, it was not fun. And then the fact that I couldn't fake out with uh, Goth's Tail didn't help at all. Uh, and my own Fluttermane wasn't, wasn't going to be beneficial. However... Game two, I will admit, I should have lost. Okay, I do, I do stand by the fact that I should have lost game two. That should have been an easy 2-0 for the, my opponent, but I did get a little lucky. Um, and then this time, I did play it a little different. So this time, they led Indeedee Hattering um, with Flutter and Torko in the back. Now the the difference in this battle that I didn't do in the first one, right? So I'm not leading Gotham Town because Trick Room is, or Psychic Train is obviously coming in the beginning, so there's no reason for me to do this. Um, I will say that I'm a little surprised that Hatterene did so much damage to my Registeel. Then again, I was technically speaking more physically defensive because of the fact that I was expecting Urshifu to be all over this fucking tournament because how popular Urshifu is, right? So I trained him to be more defensive, but in future teams, I have plans to just make Registeel more especially defensive with some defense to help against certain matchups. But at the end of the day, okay, I was not expecting this fucking Hattering to do so much damage. And that kind of put me in the back foot for a little bit. But I was like slowly able to claw myself back. And then the, the best part about it, or the, the advantage that I had is that because Torko locked itself into over, uh, interruption, right? And I think I got to the point where Trick Room was like not a, a deal anymore. Um, and I was able to tear on my Ogre Palm, which allowed me to live the, the, the eruption at like 3 HP. I literally had 3 HP. And I, that allowed me to kill the Torko at the end. And, that was basically it for game two. So I, I did make a, a little bit of an adjustment, but I still didn't feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable in this matchup with the way that, that I had my team set up. But now that I know for future, if I do do decide to do this again, I have a game plan. Now, game three was really close. I will say, like, this one was just as close, if not closer, to the first one. Because in this one, they did the same thing. They let Ndidi, had Rain, and then had Torkoal and Ursaluna in the back. Now, this was a, a lot of back and forth throughout the match. This time, I, I felt a little bit more um, comfortable just dealing with um, Landris in the front and doing a, trying to do some chip that way. Um, like I said, Hattering is a bitch and a half to deal with, um, and I didn't really have too much for it. I was not able to do any trapping, which I honestly should have tried at least, you know, because I could have uh, I could have done something with the, um, like, Keep the Gothitelle in the front, but just not have not have fake out available for myself, and then just parish trap 
that way because Flutter Man had Paris on as well, as I said in the beginning, um, as I showed you in the beginning. And so honestly, realistically speaking, I should have tried that in this matchup per se, um, because at this point we we had different different mods that we were moving around. Realistically speaking, that probably should have been the way for me to go. And I honestly put a potentially won this if I had done that. Um, but at the end, Ogre Pond was not able to live this time, and that basically caused me to lose. But it was a very close matchup regardless, and I was very happy to see what was what happened. And now I feel more confident in the future. You know, I just make some little adjustments here and there, and I think I could do well. Okay, so I just finished two of my match. Okay. Intense. Two one. Um, I did lose, but I didn't think Psy Spam was so strong, okay? And I thought my Registry was slow enough. Um, but I guess like Catering is just way too fucking slow, uh, to be honest. So it kind of makes sense. Um, I don't even know what nature my Registry is, but I probably should have made it like minus speed. I'm not making my Lander slower than my Ogre Palm or something like that. Um, but that's stuff we learn for the future, you know? So we'll see how it goes for drum set three. Now, my round three opponent was. <laughs> <laughs> this was funny because the TO was apparently friends with my opponent, right? Apparently she's well known in the space or whatever the hell, at least over here where I am, right? So she's known to, at least to the TO. And during like, I think round two or something like that, the TO was talking to her about how he was excited for one matchup in particular for her. And like, he was like, he looked at me, but I didn't know if it was actually meant for me. And... The funny thing is, is that the T.O., the only matchup he actually went to watch was mine and hers, right? This was the weird part. And when I saw her team, I was like, oh, hell no. Now I, now, now I understand why he was excited for the, the matchup. Because this is literally the similar team that... Okay, again, I want to reiterate, okay? I've been seeing some BGC content ever since I started to do this journey. So I know about this team. Whenever I saw it, because she, she had to test, show me a picture. She didn't have a team sheet, right? So she had to show me a picture of her team. And she was using the same freaking team that won like a regional like two months ago or something like that. It's the fucking, the Articuno team. Yeah, that's what she was rocking. Because she had, you know, the Alone Nine Tails, the Articuno with Choice Specs, Sheer Cold, and all the fucking ice moves in the world. Alone Nine Tails with, you know, Blizzard and, and a, Roy a Royal Veil and all that stuff. The, the Raging Bolt. Right with the salt vest, a well springs for for redirection, uh, the the Hisuian Arcanine for for choice banded damage, and the Satitan, which I don't think Satitan was in the original team. I don't recall. I, I would have to go back and look at the bots, but I'm pretty sure every other member on this squad is the same one that was in that one team that won that regionals a couple months ago. Okay, and I was in, <laughs> I was infuriated. I was like, I, what the fuck? Why am I dealing with this shit? However, the positive thing is literally. Her entire team was stopped by my Registeel, besides the Arcanine. That was the fun part about this thing, is <laughs> this matchup was just not, it was, it was not going to happen, okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you guys about this matchup. Okay, so, to, to talk about this set, okay, is, is going to be interesting, and, and, and I will admit that. So, the first match, okay, was Articuno, Ninetales in the front, Satitan, and Raging Bolt in the back. Now, this is the, the, the good part about this, this matchup is, because of the fact that she couldn't touch my Registeel at all, okay, it made this matchup a hundred times easier for me. So, I did read Le Registeel in this set because of the fact that I knew that this was not going to be easy for them. Um, and they did try the Sheer Cold stuff, okay? They, 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 tr they had to lock into it because none of their other moves were going to do anything to my Registeel because of how tanky Registeel is. They did set up an Aurora Veil and went with like Terrifier on the Ninetales very early, like start of the game, okay? But I was focusing on the Articuno because I felt like that was the bigger threat. I, I don't have no worries about the Ninetales, especially since it's like a support Ninetales. Um, but I ended up maneuvering around a little bit and I was able to get like a, an early Parish off to deal with like because um, they did switch out the Articuno at a certain point when they weren't they weren't getting a, a, an early advantage. They weren't really doing much. And they did switch out into the Raging Bolt. And I said, nah, I'm not dealing with this. So what I ended up doing is I forced them to die to the Parasong. And that was it. The, they, 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 they lost that. And then Registeel was able to win the game at the end because she literally had nothing for my Registeel. So... Like I said, the, the, the moment Articuno went down, I wasn't scared of anything else. Especially since I saw the rest of her team. I was like, no, the, the, you can't touch me. 
which which is <laughs> where I made an adjustment for, for game two. Because of the way the first match went, and the fact that she only has one Mon that can really deal with my Red Steel being her Arcanine, I was like, game two, she's leading the Arcanine, okay? Because I led Registeel the first game. But I know, I know, I know what her mindset is. I know what she's gonna do. So I don't lead Registeel. In fact, in the second game, she leads Raging Bull and Arcanine with Nine Tails and Titan in the back. This is where the fun part was. <laughs> I did lead Landorus and I think Gothitelle. I think that's what my lead was. And then I, I, I did a lot of positioning around. We, we kept moving around and stuff. Um, because like I said, I wasn't really scared. Um, at a certain point in the match, I was able to get a Paris strong off, which was beneficial for me because it allowed um, the Arcanine to go down, which meant that now she has nothing for Registeel again, which is why I won the, the, the second match uh, again, because what ended up happening is that as soon as the Arcanine is gone, right, um, I did have to get a clutch double protect to make sure that I didn't have to bring something in on the last turn of Terra, because I sacrificed my Gothitelle at that point, right, to guarantee that they were gonna die. Um, and so what ended up happening is I got the clutch double protect, which allowed the Arcanine to go down and then Registeel was able to clean up at the end of the game. Um, and that was great. It was fantastic, right? It was a, a rush of emotions. And the fact that I was able to play around the one thing that she could, she could use to defeat the one mon that basically solos her whole team was, I think, really good for, on my end. Okay, I think the positioning I did for this, for this, this particular battle, this particular set, was really good in my opinion. Um, and I felt very confident in everything that happened with that battle. All right, now my last opponent for this this tournament, and like I said, it, the way that we were split up, and the fact that one player dropped out in the middle of it was the reason why all this stuff happened. So my last opponent had what is a more standard team. You know, they had Incineroar with safety goggles, fake off, player blitz, parting shot, knock off, which is standard Incineroar stuff. Okay, Terra Poison, which I've seen a lot. I I have seen Terra Ghost a lot. But for the most part, like, Terra Poison is also good. Um, then Amoongus with the Citrus Berry. Uh, with Terra Water, Spore, Rage Powder, Pollen Pell Protect. Standard uh, Amoongus. And then they had an AV Dragonite with Terra Normal, E-Speed, Thunder Punch, Aerial Ace, Stormy Tantrum. Now, I've never seen an AV Dragonite, but I know, do know it's somewhat common. Okay, I have heard that sometimes Dragonite is used in, as a bulky uh, AV Mon. So that was good. And then the Choice Specs Fluttermane, which is Standard Moonblast. Dazzling Gleam, Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt, and I'm assuming Thunderbolt is for stuff like the Urshifu and stuff like that. And then they have a Choice Card, Urshifu, Water, Terra Poison, right, with Surging Sight, Aqua Jet, Close Combat, U-Turn, Standard Urshifu stuff, except for the Terra Poison. I've never seen that. I've always seen Terra Water, but I'm assuming that's to counter, like, opposing Flutter Mains or stuff like that, like a Booster Flutter Main. I don't know. That's what I'm going to assume. Or maybe the fucking Ogre Ponds. That could also be a thing. Um, and then the last one is Focus Sash, Shen Power, which is also standard Terra Ghost. Ice Spinner, Sucker Punch, Sacred Sword, and Protect. This was pretty much the only standard team I fucking faced. Well, besides the Articuno one, but that, I don't call that standard. That was a gimmick for one tournament. <laughs> but this is like the most standard out of everybody I faced in this tournament. This this set was... The, the, this is the type of set I was prepared for. These are the Mons that I was prepared for. Okay, all tournament. That I before this tournament, I was like, I'm expecting to see some fucking Incineroar, some Amoongus, some fucking Urshifus, okay? The Fluttermane's always gonna be a, 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 a thorn in everybody's side because Fluttermane is that crucial, that like popular. So, this is literally the team, the, the type of team I was expecting to face. And it went perfect. Now, the funny part about my team, right? And I, I didn't show you like the full, full sets of my mons, they just showed you what they have. And stuff like that. My Scream Tail, I made it very toxic. Okay, it had Parish Song, obviously, because that's the core center of this team. Play Rough as an attacking move, because you always need to have an attacking move. Encore to save. <laughs> so when you have choice demands, okay, then it's not good for you if I disable your choice moves, right? So that's never good. So they led Incineroar, Chen Pao. Um, and then they had Urshifu in the back and Fluttermane. I think that's what it was. Yeah, that's what they had. Um, Registeel's a boss, okay? I was able to set up my Registeel so well and so well done. Um, and the way, the way I handled my Screamtail is that I made her defensive booster. So, ain't no way no fucking Urshifu is ever gonna tank my, my Ursh my... No, no way no Urshifu is ever gonna defeat my, my Screamtail no matter what, okay? 
it, it's just never gonna happen because booster the way it works is that I, i'm pretty sure it still helps out a lot against the urshifu stuff because it's not like a buff like a regular buff you know like if you go like for defense boosts and stuff like that no it's the, the, i don't know how photosynthesis works this way but it makes them prove i don't fucking know but anyways so i was able to disable his whole fucking team is my point i was able to encore disable everything that um that i could and then on top of that, I was able to just tank everything with Registeel. Like Registeel took care of the Chimpow and the Fluttermane. And then the Incineroar wasn't able to do much because my Landorus was also in the back. And actually my Ogre Pond. Uh, I think it was Ogre Pond, the one that de defeated uh, the Incineroar. And then Urshifu was just stuck because I was able to disable it. Um, and that just, it didn't help. And then game two was a little different because they did lead Amoongus and Incineroar. But the, the cool thing about my Gothitelle is EV'd to not only be faster um, than standard Incineroar, it's trained to have to outspeed even some speed investment on Incineroar. So my Gothitelle is always going to move first. And I knew for a fact because of the way that the turns played out in the first game where my fake out came out first, um, I was able to make sure that he knows that you can't fake out my goth cell and i was able to taunt the amoongus shutting down amoongus so i couldn't do anything um and then my scream tail was able to, to deal with it um in different ways um and then i was able to like parish trap um the dragonite and i don't remember what the other one was but i was able to take that advantage and then i disabled the yoshifu again because you it couldn't lock itself into a move that was going to be beneficial so my my scream tail was always going to tank it um, and then Registeel came back and, and was able to like clutch it out against the Amoongus and Cineroar, everything else. And it just was, it, it literally was not a fair battle. I, I will admit that. It was not fun. Um, actually, I think the Amoongus died to the Paris Song alongside the Dragonite, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, Urshifu wasn't standing a chance with, with Screamtail around. And, like literally, I, I literally won that one 4 right? The, the match, that, like I didn't lose a single Mon in my last battle of the tournament. Um, so it was wild. It was crazy. Um... Next time, if I do do this again, uh, I'm gonna get have my wife help me out with like recording my my screen in some form so that it's easier, or at least like help me out with like writing notes and stuff, um, or something like that because I I thought I wrote better notes than I did. Okay, so I feel fine. So this is basically the end portion of the video. Okay, I, I do apologize I wasn't able to get like a uh, post match recording for like the third and final battle, but they literally happen like back to back. Like as soon as I did the, I, I did the video for the second battle, right, that you guys saw, right? And then I went in and I did my third battle and then immediately as soon as I were done, because it took so long, that matchup took so long that everybody else had finished. And what ended up happening is they're like, well, do you guys just want to do the finals? And I was like, well, I guess, fine, sure. So they literally just like, start doing your finals. And then I, you know, faced my final opponent. Like I said, like I said, one person dropped out and I think that's very unsportsmanlike because like you just lost in the first round one battle. like. People lose all the time, right? This like the people that the, the the person I beat in round one ended up getting third, right? So like was it really a problem for you to like stick it out? Like I don't know what team they had, obviously, because I never faced the person. But I do feel like that was a little rude in my opinion, because everybody else is here and we're all still participating, even though a couple people lost in the first round, right? So there's not a lot of us here, which means at least half of us lost the first round. So there's no reason for for that person to have left, but that's them and their conscience. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, but overall, it was a fun experience. I didn't get second. The guy, the only, my only loss in the tournament is the person who won. So I got, so they got first, I got second, and then the opponent I beat in round one um, is the one that uh, got third. So they 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 had an interesting team. Don't get me wrong. Um, I'm just a little upset because I definitely could have won that. <laughs> that second set if I had played a little bit differently if I felt confident enough to run the Paris trap because I think that's that was my downfall for that matchup It's the fact that it was trick room So I thought I had to play it differently, but I'm running Paris trap for a reason So I might as well like, you know use it right now. I think that would have given me a huge advantage um, in the long run obviously and Overall it was good. It was good. It, I, I felt very happy um, to have you know, like the plays I made and the fact that I was able to beat such a standard team with because that's what I was expecting. I was expecting this to, to face a somewhat standard team and well, As soon as I face it and I did so well the fact that I didn't lose a single mon in the last game of the tournament 
Because like I said, my matches, I feel this is obviously going to feel like reminiscent to like when I was watching Wolf Glitz like videos is the fact that in some tournaments, like he's like the last matchup to finish in a round. And like it happened to me, but that's because of the strategy that I've employed for this tournament is like technically speaking, extending it a little longer. Like it has to work to be more defensive oriented. So it kind of makes sense that something like this would happen. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't mean that, um, I, 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 I'm just, <laughs> I can't believe I actually went through the whole, like, oh my god, I'm the last match. <laughs> and literally it happened. The third, the third and final matches, right, the, the, the third and fourth set for me, right, took so long. that we were, like, everybody else had finished by the time I finished. And it got to the point where I finished my third round match, or my third set. And they were like... Well, everybody else is done. Do you want to just do the last, the last set? And I was like, sure, go, let's go for it. And I honestly, I didn't feel burned out. I was very happy. I was nervous. Don't get me wrong, because it's my first time doing this stuff. But the fact that I got second, and granted, I, I know that people are going to be like, well, there wasn't that many people anyways. You probably, like, if you went to, like, a real tournament, you would have done shit. But, like, think about it like this. It's my first time doing this, okay? These people, from what I was listening, because a lot of them were talking, they, they've gone to various events, okay? This is not their first time, right? This is not their first time in the rodeo, right? So for me to be somebody with no experience in this environment, like I did, I technically lied to you all, okay? This isn't my first BGT tournament. Technically speaking, I did participate in like the open challenge like a couple of weeks ago, but like that's not even real. That wasn't even the final form of like the first version of this team. Like this is like version three of my team, right? So like it wasn't even the final form of my first official VTC team, right? So I don't count that. And that was online with people that run gimmicks because it's one best of ones. Whereas this is like an, an official tournament style environment. And I was able to keep my cool, my composure playing against people that have gone to various tournaments around the island. So excuse me, if I take that in strides, and be like, I did good for my first time, okay? So once again, this was fun. This was great. And I'm I'm looking at other events that are happening here, okay? I'm not I'm not doing any fucking traveling outside of my country, okay? I'm not doing that, okay? The only reason I would ever do that is if I felt like this was something worth pursuing, right? And if I get more comfortable with the, the format and, and everything that's going on and I would get better at team building and I participate in more events here where i live then maybe maybe i'll go to a regional maybe and realistically speaking if i ever go to a regional the closest one is in florida and i don't know how i feel about going to florida for a pokemon tournament i'm gonna see how it goes um there's definitely like other events in the east coast that i could potentially go for like i know there's a couple regionals right but i'm not going this year right my thing is if I'm doing this now, right, this is the, 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 I'm sorry this video is so long, but I want to give you guys. If I start doing this now, my mentality is when we eventually get to like the next main series titles, which is Gen 10, I'll be able to, like if I really dedicate myself to this and I really enjoy it, then I'll actually be able to start a VGC season from the beginning. Because right now we're starting regulation G which is with the restricted format. Okay, I literally came in at the end of the the, the format right before restricted are, are introduced, okay? So I, I'm always late to this shit, okay? And I do admit, if I had ever really started delving into this when I was younger, like, I do believe I could be something of myself. Because I the way I play, right, I do think that I, I, I'm good at reading people sometimes. So if I'm facing somebody face to face, I can help. It helps out a lot. Okay, it helps a ton. So granted, I did lose a set, so I'm not gonna say I'm perfect. But like I said, my first time, and the fact that I got second, even though there weren't that many people, gives me a confidence boost. Especially because I was able to make safe plays that led to future stuff. Okay, I was able to future proof the game to help me win. Cause I'm pretty sure that the set I lost is the only one that did wasn't a 2-0, right? This, it was a 2-1, it was a close 2-1, okay? Every other set I played was a 2-1 on my end, okay? Which means I was able to play around 
in ways that gave me an advantage in the early match, and then I was able to like snowball that into the rest of the the set. So I don't know. I, I can I can see a future in this. That's what, that's what I want to say. I do see a future in this, and I don't know. Maybe this will be something that I do in the future. Is something interesting? Heck. Like, if I eventually get to the point where I, I do get a capture card, I could do some fucking, like, stream matches, you know, with, with viewers and stuff, uh, VGC or singles. I don't have a problem with that. I can make singles Pokemon as well. I, I Like I said, singles has always been my bread and butter, right? So, I don't mind doing either one. But in terms of, like, official formats, right, because Smogon, as much as I love singles... It will never be the standard, so I have to just learn VGC, right? That's the other thing. I have to learn VGC. Um, but now I'm watching content for that stuff, right? I'm, I'm indulging myself into what this space is about. I, I do have to say, Wolf Glick brought a new person into this format. And, you know, that's not something a lot of people can say. So I, I do know that the fact that he's such a pillar of the community, right? He's so, he has such a way of playing the game and a way that he thinks about the game that was able to click with somebody that's never played BGC in his life, right? So he's really good, I think, for the scene. Um, and he's basically just, he's made a new player, okay? I don't know how far I'm gonna take this, but um, I do have my wife supporting me, right? And I know that my, my family and my friends, if I do decide to do this, will support me. Um, I have, I, I mean, there's only three people right now, right? Between, you know, in terms like, like um, for teams and stuff, you know, I have my boy Choir Boy, which once again, I do want to thank him for like, he, he, we didn't even have a call. We were just texting each other um, and DMing stuff and like analyzing stuff. And he would give me tips and stuff like that. So like, I'm really appreciative of him um, helping me like, come up with sets and, and team build in this brand new format that I've never experienced before. So like Fireboy, like I really, really appreciate all the support and help you did uh, give me to make this a success for me. Um, and then a huge, huge, huge thanks to Zen for helping me um, in, in, in getting the mons right for this tournament and also helping with the Terra stuff. Because, boy, I gotta say, because I, I got into this late, and he's been playing these games. Like, he just does it on a casual level. He just plays this shit for fun. So, like, he helped me with the Terra stuff. Like, he he was like, what you need? And I'm like, okay, well, I need this one to be this Terra. And he would tell me, go trade it over, and then he would do it, and, and then send it back, and all this stuff. So, like, really, I really appreciate having him um, as a partner in this, right? And who knows, if I really start expanding and growing and stuff like that, I can make my own little team and then we can all share teams or... I don't know, it's just it's just interesting, like, the, the, the possibilities for this journey of me. And like I said, I don't know if this is something that I'm fully going to be invested in, okay? I'm not saying that this is, like, a long-term commitment, but if I really get good at it, right, and if I really, really, really enjoy it, then I can see, like, a small future in this space, okay? And, and I know that it, it'll help. It'll help a lot. And I hope that you all, my viewers, will be joining me on this journey. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. This is not <laughs> my usual type of content, okay? I'm a Pokemon reviewer, like the anime, <laughs> and, and, and just a bunch of silly stuff and Let's Plays and stuff like that. I've never been BGC uh, related, but if you're interested, hell, like, join us. Like, be, uh, Discord is down below. Like, talk in the chat, talk in the, in the comment sections. I'm always here for feedback and and stuff like that so i'm really hoping that if i do turn this into a real thing that i'll have more tournaments in the future which will mean you'll have more bgc coverage from me and i hope you guys just have a blast with that so without further ado that's gonna be it for my journey of my first official bgc tournament ever in my life and how i got second place at said tournament my first time through thank you guys so much for watching i have been Sarah croxton and I will definitely see you guys in future videos.